Good afternoon. Hello. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today and deliver the keynote address to such a distinguished audience. My thanks to Dipshika and her team at Speak In for inviting me. Let me also compliment you on the tremendous job that you all are doing. Speaking of the speakers, Mimi mentioned talent, experience, and opinion. Uh, speaking for myself, I don't know about talent and experience, but I certainly have opinions that I can impose on you. So let me uh, start off on the topic of the day. Diversity and inclusion has been said to be all about creating a culture of belonging and making an organization complete and successful. But a colleague shared with me a simpler definition, which I really like and would like to share with you. She said, diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Let me set the ball rolling by talking about some of the top myths around DNI that I continue, I come across and feel need to be busted. The first one, diversity about, is about gender and race. While traits like gender and race tend to come to mind immediately when we hear the word diversity, other traits like age, disability, gender identity, sexual orientation, thinking style, cultural background, marital status, political affiliation, and others need to be recognized as well. Acknowledging the full spectrum of traits is a key factor in encouraging an inclusive environment. The second myth, unconscious bias workshops can infuse inclusion. Yes, prejudice starts with identifying our unconscious biases and more importantly, the blind spots. While trying to rewire our brains to welcome differences is a good start. Is it enough to breed inclusivity and undo the biases? What of our environments outside of these workshops? Do we pay sufficient attention to that? Myth number three, diversity hiring meets all targets. Yes, sure, it will help meet the diversity target, but will not ensure inclusion. Remember, it will only work as an invitation to the party. We need a whole spectrum of initiatives to ensure that this is backed well for inclusion. The fourth myth, diversity hiring means lowering the bar. And this is really one of my pet peeves. This is symptomatic of an underlying belief that the average performance of minorities across gender and race is less than the overall mean. We first need to break this barrier in our own thinking. In no way is it a reduction of anything that we are expecting. The fifth one, DNI is a human resources responsibility. While it's common to find DNI staff and initiatives led by human resources, organizations who have fully embraced DNI have often made it a leadership imperative. If it's not owned at the very top, if the culture is not driven from the very top and from functional leaders and from business leaders, I don't think HR can do anything. We as leaders need to own it, sponsor it, and embrace it. Promoting diversity and inclusion needs to go beyond mere words. I know we have a distinguished panel that will delve into this in much greater detail. So let me step back. I do hope that today's discussion will trigger thoughts and actions in each of us that we can take back to our organizations and start making a difference. Thank you for your attention. Stay safe.